What is up everybody? This month marks my seventh year anniversary when I actually started my trading journey. Now, I didn't trade for full seven years. I believe it was March of 2019 where I sat down and haven't fucking left since. Uh, but that's when I started on this, okay? So I'm gonna say I have seven years of experience even though it's not a seven because there's definitely months of not doing this. Um, but you know what? Seven years is what I started upon this journey. <clears throat> and then I finally decided to sit the fuck down and just do whatever I could to make it work. Okay. Uh, so this video is going to be advice for new traders because when I started, uh, I would have liked to known certain things. All right. And chances are you're a newer trader. If you're watching this video, since that's the fucking title of the video, has something to do with new traders. I don't know what the title is yet because this is being filmed in the past. But anyways, chances are you're a newer trader. And anytime I make content for newer traders, it they tend to be more popular. So um, really, you don't meet too many traders who've been sitting here for as long as I have. Uh, a lot of one-year traders, two-year traders. But when you're getting up in that you know, four, five year range, there's just not as many. They, um, there's a reason for that. So here's the thing. You all think you're gonna fucking make it. Chances are damn near none of you are gonna make it. I mean, that's the reality. Uh, this is a brutally difficult job. It gets easier, okay? I've been crushing it lately, and it does get easier. It's never easy. Uh, you're still gonna, I still make fucking mistakes. I'll talk about that later in the fucking video. But um, there gets to a point where you're gonna have confidence and you know exactly what the fuck you're doing. Um, you're still gonna choke and fuck up because like, you know, every setup is very unique there's there's and here's the thing new traders here's my first piece of advice there are no setups as far as i know where you can just copy and paste and do this same exact pattern over and over and over it's just i it doesn't exist and if it does congratulations you've found something magically special and uh, I congratulate you on finding that, but I've not seen it. I've not seen anybody else figure figure that out because like every fucking setup has its own unique nuance to it that um, no two trades are the same because uh, just, just especially when you throw correlations in the mix like I do, no tr two trades are the same. Yes, I can have uh, a trade like my gap setup uh, which there's a video on that uh, if you guys want to go check that out you can uh, it's just one of my oldest edges um, that specific um, setup it's it's pretty cut and dry on how to find it it's just like there's it's, it's really easy to figure out where that setup is however getting into it and getting it to work and getting it to work the first time it's just always like different okay and then as the gaps are larger, there's more nuance. They need a higher EV count. They need to be tested more before they actually flush through. The smaller they are, they don't need as much. However, there's times where if the price starts ranging on top of them, they're not going to work. Even if they're smaller and the EV count goes up. So yeah, it's, it's, it's one of these setups that works, but the, every fucking one is slightly different. I mean, there's a lot of times where you get this instantaneous momentum through it. However, the price action is always so different approaching it. There's so much like context that's always different that's leading up to that. So when I'm leading up to a setup like that, all that price action on a chart, all that shit is skewed up and different. It's, it's either a wedge, it's not a wedge, it's a range, it's some sloppy shit. Whatever that, wherever that price action is coming from is going to affect the future setup uh, because I am 
really big in the charting. Um, I have the, uh, you know, I basically have this free course I've been putting together on YouTube. If you want to go check that out, it's all about how I chart and just my whole trading system as a whole. Go check that out. Um, however, like all the price action that's even happened, you know, five days ago, like right now we're breaking, we're, we're breaking a like multi-day ranges, five day ranges and all the price action and the way that range was constructed and the way the price is coming out and the specific levels we're hitting, that all influences my decision on how to attack a simple setup like a gap because like a gap for me and it's not an overnight gap guys so if you're new it's it's different i showed you what that video is it's 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 something to do with what's in a volume profile a three-year volume profile i'll explain in that video however again those setups are really easy to find really easy to find however the attack and the approach is it's always different so when you're consuming content while there's a lot of content out there that is trash uh, or very elementary and basic, I think if you're new, it's okay to consume everything um, that you can get your hands on. Um, however, at some point, most of the content is just very like basic and it's not really uh, rich and technical. Kind of like the shit I do, because it takes me a very long time to explain setups. And what's interesting is there's actually an interview with Lance Breitstein. If you don't know who he is, uh, apparently he was an eight-figure trader. Works with S&B Capital now. And he did an interview with Humble Trader. I highly recommend checking that out. And he talks about the traders that actually do well on these prop desks. And... He challenged some traders to do a write-up on a specific setup. And um, a lot of traders put in simple write-ups. However, what he wants to see is people, when they analyze a setup, like write massive documents, if you will, or go really rich and deep on one setup. Like he talked about in that specific interview when he was in school, he would maybe journal and it would only be a few sentences. And then there would be the teacher's pet who would make like two or three pages of a write-up and going into all these like analytics and all this nuance. According to him, those are the people that make it on prop desks. So I find that to be true because I've challenged a lot of traders to explain their setups and most of them have these simple little write-ups. And it's not deep enough. It's not rich enough. It's 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 almost like I don't have confidence in that. And when you watch me break down a setup and I spend an hour or whatever combing through it, this happened, this happened, therefore if these things happen, then this could happen. And it just like to really pick it apart to the nuts and bolts. Um, that allows, that allows me to build confidence. Like that just, and when I, if I can pick a trade apart and it takes me, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to fucking explain a trade, um, those are always the best trades for some fucking reason. They always are. So when you're new, you're going to be consuming a lot of content and it's going to be a, a lot of elementary basic content. Um, you're not going to learn how to trade in a five or 10 minute video. Some people complain my videos are too long. Here's the thing. If my videos are too long, how are you going to sit there and focus for two, three, four, five fucking hour sessions? Five days a week. How are you going to sit here patiently? focused and paying attention to the market because you have to you can't be dicking around playing games or looking at your phone you need to sit there and pay a pay attention the entire time i mean there's times where you can disconnect from it a little bit don't get me wrong there's there's these moments where you can disconnect from it but you should be paying attention 
So, how are you going to be able to focus on the markets for hours upon hours with, you know, with good intentions here and not get sidetracked if you can't watch a fucking hour long video? You're not going to learn how to trade off a five or ten minute fucking video. Just it doesn't it doesn't work like that. Um, so that's the thing, you know. A lot of shit you consume is it's just it's not detailed enough in my opinion. Um, and that's the thing, like if you look at Lance Breitstein's past, he actually, you know, he didn't make money for like the first year and a half or some shit like that. The first year he didn't make money. However, he was on a tier one prop firm and he sat next to professionals. Like he sat next to professionals that were consistently fucking making money. Okay, yet he he didn't he wasn't able to make money, so that really goes into another point, another piece of advice for uh, you guys. And before I get into that, I just want to finish off what I was saying. It's just like there's a lot of content out there, and um, I'm not here to say you know certain content's bad or good. When you're new, just consume it all. Um. However, at some point, you're going to be consume, consuming very rep, repetitive shit. And this goes into the second point. If Lance sat there with professionals in a professional environment who were consistently making really good money, and he couldn't do it himself for the first year, um, you're 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 not going to be able to you're not going to be able to take somebody's system on the internet in a 10 minute video and then just make it work. Uh, that's it's just not gonna happen. Uh, and this is why like I offer my coffee and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it here. So like, I think courses are good, but I think courses also suck because they're filmed in a snippet of time where this is, I've had a hard time like trying to make a course because it's like well shit this is like it's gonna be so long that i have like fucking 50 hours of narrations 45 episodes almost 400 trades on my coffee um all the videos are posted in there uh i have a bunch of case studies some report cards with where i talk about my drawdowns and how i'm gonna fix the drawdowns in a week because you know it's one thing to go through a course, but like, what do you do when you fuck up? Um, how do you fix that? So my case studies are my narrations and case studies and perhaps it's me preaching what it is that I share on this channel. So if you're interested, I mean, it's ongoing shit. So that's the thing, like when it comes to like courses or any of this material where you're learning somebody else's trading strategy, whether it's free on YouTube in a 10 minute video, or you actually pony up and buy a several thousand dollar course. Um, it's a snippet of time. It's like, you might see one, two, three, or a handful of these setups. However, these market environments change. Like the market is not what it was when I started. So what does that mean? Well, if you go to watch my how to read a DOM video, um, look at ES. The average bid offer on the DOM was like 500. Now it's less than 100. So the, the order book itself is substantially thinner and it's never been that thick. So therefore the market environment has shifted. And then within, since COVID, we've been in a sideways market if you look at a daily chart at this point <clears throat> and we've not been in a sideways market to this extent really is years and years ago well before i started trading so the amount of volatility and sideways price action that's going on if you consume a course pre-covid it's it's not the same shit so therefore consuming anybody's trading strategies or any of that shit while that can be great and some of those ele elements can still apply, these environments shift and that's only a snippet of time that personally for me, um, that's why I have my coffee is cause like, I want to continue to show you this shit working 
uh, day after day and how I'm making adjustments as the environment shifts because adjustments are going to have to be made. However, being able to see, you know, hundreds of these setups over and over in the in the different nuances and how different they are yet how similar they are and how the whole system ties together uh for me that's um that's just sort of how i feel uh, like good material is is like can you find somebody that you might want to replicate that's able to consistently share uh, what they're doing over and over and that's where like maybe some live streamers I don't live stream anymore however following certain live streamers assuming they're pretty decent or whatever um, that's always a good option um, so you know not the shit all over courses I think they have their time and place and they've really shaped my identity but uh, when you guys are out there consuming material you know consume it all at first and then um you gotta, you're gonna eventually find your own identity. That's another thing I'd like to get into is, um, I recently was talking to a, a, another trader and hardcore order flow guy. And I tend to have that reputation because a lot of my videos, uh, were hardcore order flow shit. And I was really kind of like sandbagging and hiding, um, the other things I was doing. Um, because I did plan on making a course, which I, I'm like, you know, fuck this. I'd rather just make these ongoing videos. I think that's, and then make the course free on YouTube. Uh, and if you want to see ongoing case studies, feel free to join. Um, cause just watching my playlist on how to do this shit, it's, it's not enough. You need to continue to see this shit ongoing. So, um... I was talking to this trader and hardcore order flow guy, you know, consumed a lot of Gary Norton shit, John Grady, love both of those guys. I learned a lot from them. Uh, however, they're very biased and they're against charts. And he was saying, Hey man, I, I see you like taking these trades off charts all the time. And you, you know, you just, it's clear that you know how to read these things. And I've been so biased because of these other guys. And he did something right. He modeled a trader tick for tick. Like he was modeling. And I think when you're new, it's good to model a specific trader and do like almost exactly what they say. However, at some point, um, all great traders craft their own trading identity. The way I trade my system, uh, I've really, it's not, it's not all of these courses that I've consumed. You know, I guys, I made a video on courses, like all the courses I've ever taken. And don't ask me if I've taken something that's not in that video because I haven't. Stop asking me if I've done ICT. What do I think of that? What do I think? I don't fucking know. Everything I've done is in that video. There you go. But anyways, um, my trading system is very much, yes, it was inspired and those things pivoted me and put me in the in the direction to where I am where I am now right like consuming those courses like it's like flying an airplane you move it one degree to the right or left you're gonna end up in a completely different area than had you left it straight and you then turn it you know one degree you know 2,000 miles later the fucking plane's gonna be somewhere completely different a thousand miles off course you know so when you take a course it's gonna pivot you and it's ultimately going to shit everything you're consuming is pivoting you even the shit you consume on my channel had you not consumed like one video on my channel and you were like oh my god you know maybe you learned about a dom and then you never watched another one of my videos that's and then you start using it well, that's going to pivot you one degree. So in the next several years, you're going to be somewhere completely different if you didn't watch that video. It's like all this shit you're consuming is pivoting you. Um, however, in the end, like I've crafted my own identity. And that's the thing. As a new trader, don't be so fucking biased for fuck's sakes. Um, it's it's okay to be biased. I, I do have my biases like because like I've found what works for me. There's certain things I think are not that great like 
you know, I've been using Delta a bit more. I've always looked at it. I made a video some years ago where I'm like, it's kind of useless. But even in that video, I said, you know, I know other traders use this with success. So what I'm trying to say is like, there's an unlimited amount of ways to be able to do this job. All right. There's no one fucking way. And there's always new ways being discovered because there's just so many tools at your disposal. There's so many technical indicators. There's so many ways of seeing it. There's so many ways of com combining this shit. People are making their own fucking indicators. People are just reading and doing things in completely different ways that there are unlimited amounts of ways to do this that you should never be close-minded to what other traders are fucking doing. So it goes to my point, like Gary Norton thinks charts are just complete fucking bullshit and he thinks technical analysis is complete bullshit. And he has every right to have that bias. However, to be that fucking close-minded and to think it's just purely bullshit and not look at it from the perspective of, hey, you know, there's other traders that are having success with these things. Um, I think is ignorance and you shouldn't do that. You should be more open-minded. Now, when I say you should be more open-minded, a lot of the way you're going to perceive and attack markets and go within this journey, a lot of the way you're going to see trading, the way you live your life and everything that's happening outside of your life is going to influence the way you uh, look at markets. So if you're normally a very close-minded individual outside of trading, then you're probably gonna be more close-minded in trading. Um, you know, like if you're like, I don't know, like for me, when it comes to politics, I just don't give a fuck. However, I respect, you know, you have this fucking decision you like this party or that party whatever that's fucking fine i don't give a shit i got friends on both sides of the political spectrum i mean i have my own opinions on it however i realize that people perceive the world different than i do not everybody is gonna look at the world the way you do everybody like just sees it through a different fucking lens you know and that's just how it is. And you have to look at the, like you can't look at people like they look at it, like like they should look at the world from your perspective. And that's the thing with some of these traders are so fucking closed minded and so biased that they they have this thing where it's this or everything else is bullshit, but it's like it's not true. So when it comes to these other traders, you know, like as I've gone through, like I'm a very open-minded individual and shit. So as I've gone through my trading journey, um, you know, whatever, they can have their biases. However, what do they have that I can take from that really resonates with me and that I can really leverage to build my own trading identity? Because as I gain more experience, and that's why the course video that I showed you when I review all the course videos, it was done in chronological order. Because as I was new and I started to evolve, I start to view these things different. Like I took the Epteros course, and I do have a link if you, a lot of people want to do the Nadro shit, you can save a lot of money. There's a landing page link in the description if you want to save a shitload of money on their material. I'm just saying it's in there. So you save yourself a lot of money uh, with that. Um, the thing about like Nadro, um, had I done that when I was a new trader, it would have had a totally different impact on me than had I done it with many years of experience. So, you know, as you go through these things, just understand you're going to become your own unique trader you're going to craft your own unique identity and you see the world from a complete unique lens you perceive the world different than anybody else um that is find the model at certain traders or listen to certain people however be skeptical when somebody says all this other stuff over here is bullshit 
Now, it's okay to have a bias and say that shit don't work for me. I think this shit is no good. I could never figure it out. That's fine. However, if somebody is completely dismissive of some other style, it's 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 bullshit. Uh, in my opinion. Well, maybe I'm contradicting myself right there. Um, but I've just seen so many traders trade different styles and have success, so it's not bullshit. It, it's, that's just how it is. It's just, these good traders that you hear on chat with traders and all that. Great podcast, by the way. They're all unique. They're all doing different unique shit. So, I mean, and I'm doing unique different shit. So, um, take stuff that resonates with you. There's a lot of traders that have taken, taken from me, um, who use it in different ways, um, or taking different setups, um, than, than I would, but they're leveraging a lot of what I might do or a little bit of what I do. However, they're crafting their own identity because the market is a foreign language and we have to learn how to read it and how to understand what it's telling us by using these different tools, techniques, and most importantly, having experience uh, to be able to make sound decisions. So therefore, just know that as you're going through your journey, take from different people. <clears throat> now, um, continuing on, I also want to talk about, you know, as you gain more experience and you start to get to know people in this industry like me or somebody else, there, there comes a time where we're going to talk about sort of the mental aspect of trading because I think the, I already made a video on why I think traders have a high failure rate that's a couple years old at this point that as I've gained more knowledge I want to add to that so I think another reason a lot of traders have high failure rate is because they don't really understand the importance of the mental aspect of trading because it's very important um Time and time again, I've seen guys suffer with this shit. A really good friend of mine kept failing these combines. And then eventually he passed one and then he made a couple of thousand dollars. And then he got stupid up here and fucked it. Um, it happens, man. Even even in my trading, because uh, on Monday I hit drawdown. It's what? Wednesday. We're good. I got it back yesterday and then today was a good day as well, but I got a little stupid today in the beginning. Um, but we're good. Uh, I think, I think that, and that's also the difference between like a, somebody who's consistently doing well versus somebody who's not at some point, you're going to know what you're doing. It's just making less mistakes. Um, I make a lot less mistakes than somebody with less experience than me or that's newer. I just am not making as many f fuck ups. And that really helps, trust me. Also holding, really holding when you shouldn't hold and you know you need to hold longer as well, that really helps as well. So making less mistakes and being able to hold longer, that really makes the difference. So if you're making a way more mistakes than sound decisions, you're not gonna be doing well, so. The mental aspect of trading is so big and most guys aren't working on this. I, I would say, I would argue to say 96% of traders aren't working on this because I try to push a lot of traders to work on this and they just don't do shit. Um, because a lot of the mental aspect of trading has nothing to do with trading. It has shit to do with your everyday life who you are as a person, your subconscious programming, your ego, um, all the way you live your life, the way you approach people, the way you approach other situations reflects in trading. Um, and I think mindfulness and being super self-aware is huge and just shutting your fucking brain off. And I just like, I, I'm starting to do these longer 30 minute meditations um and my god and then i'm going into these 
fasted states, like I do some fasting as well. And I do these 30 minute meditations. They're just fucking just like vacation. I do ice baths all the time to help build mental resilience. Um, and then also, I mean, this is kind of gross, but I'm going to say it because I don't give a shit. This is more of a cult of cat episode. I really need to do enough. Like, no fap if you're, like, chronically fucking yoinking it. You know what I'm saying? Because um, this is a male-dominated sport. I think if you keep, like, athletes do this before games, keeping the semen in your fucking legs. So, um, you know, a combination of just these things that I do outside of trading really helps. And, and to be honest with you, uh, to, to do ice baths all the fucking time and to, like, Try to keep the fucking, you know, come in your legs uh, for extended periods of time. I'm not saying, I mean, if you got a woman or some shit, you know, whatever. However, just like, go a week with it, keeping it in your legs. See what happens. But, um, doing all these really hard things, even fasting as well, and then these long meditations, um, that shit's not easy. It's hard and it's discipline. And if you can have discipline doing these things that help build mindfulness and are good for you and help promote all this other shit, it reflects in your trading. Like, uh, I visualize sessions all the time and I visualize trading bad sessions as if I traded them very well. And then I, and I've told you guys this in past videos, I visualize myself be becoming a seven figure trader before I became one. I'm not a seven figure trader yet. I'll eventually be there. It's going to happen. So, and you guys are going to see it. Um, but I had to visualize this shit and really believe it before it happened. And that's the thing. A lot of traders don't work on that mental aspect of the game and it's doing all sorts of things. It's, it's, you know, they say, oh, I need to be more calm or more patient. Well, the thing is you have this subconscious unconscious programming where something's happening that until the unconscious becomes conscious, I think that's a Carl Jung uh, quote, then it, it's just going to be this repeatable pattern. It's going to be this thing that keeps happening. So when you continuously make these fucking mistakes over and over, there's something going on at an unconscious level that until it becomes consciously aware, uh, it's just going to keep happening. And it's, 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 you're going to make these same mistakes over and over. It's going to be just absolutely mind numbing to the point you just, hopefully you get sick of it and don't quit, but you get sick of it enough to the point you're going to do something about it. So that's the thing is like, um, this level of disconnection and also like get rid of fucking social media. I, I the only thing I got is like a fucking Twitter, uh, but I do not read anything on there because I don't want to fill my head with that shit. I believe the human mind is very fragile and we can be in very influenced. You think you're mentally strong, but that's the thing. If somebody cuts you off, are you going to get fucking pissed in traffic? Probably, right? If somebody cuts you off and gives you the finger, is that going to piss you off? It might make you feel a certain way. So therefore, somebody else controlled the way you feel. And if there's, you're not in control of the markets. However, you are 100% in control of the way you feel and react to situations. And we, as humans, I think technology has really outpaced us in the sense that we are very primitive in a lot of ways that our minds can't handle all of this stimulus and all this noise and all this shit that's coming at us that um we have not evolved to be able to handle this shit like this all this stimulus has just come out of the last you know 100 years and it's only getting worse not to say it's a bad thing however we just we're a lot more fragile than we think it's it's like if you wake up and you're taking your morning shit and you look at a fucking Facebook post and you, one of your acquaintances or Facebook friends says some stupid shit about politics. That could just set and pivot you 
Much like the airplane analogy I used, for the rest of the day, you could be thinking, oh, I can't believe fucking Andrew said this about fucking Biden or Trump or whatever, and then you're just thinking about it all fucking day. Had you not looked at it, it would have not pivoted your fucking day, is what I'm trying to say. Most people are, damn near everybody is influenced and pivoted by everything that is happening out here. And I really see this in, in the trading realm a lot that there's so much drama between traders, it's fucking stupid. Like you have these Twitter traders that just talk shit to each other. And then you have the community get in on it that aren't influencers that try to trash and drag other traders under the bus or that motherfuckers full of shit or that guy's a who gives a fuck like you're putting all this attention and focus and if you're one of these people you gotta fucking stop because chances are if you're doing it with fucking traders you're doing it outside of life with other fucking humans like to put all this energy and focus on somebody like i've had a hater who kept making new fucking uh accounts and kept fucking with my youtube channel and it was the same guy i could tell because of the way he fucking worded shit but the fact that somebody would continuously make uh new accounts new emails and take that time to take out all that time to just try to fuck with me and i really don't give a fuck um is sad that somebody's gonna expand all that energy to fuck with somebody or to do all this shit when in reality the only thing you should be doing is I mean you could take that energy and work on yourself become a better version of yourself learn to not let a complete stranger on the internet fuck with you to the point you want to fuck with them like I'm just a face I'm just a YouTube I, there is an X up there and you can just turn it off but the fact that I can I just create content I'm a complete stranger and I don't even know this person in real life that people will go out and do that kind of shit is sad and what's happening is chances are you're projecting and that's where a lot of self-awareness comes and this does relate to trading like if you're if somebody does something that pisses you off or upsets you what is it in you what is it in you that there's there's might be something deep rooted going on in you um that's the problem because how is it that i just don't give a fuck about what these other traders are doing how is it that I don't give a shit? Like, some of these trading channels are so comically horrible that um, instead of just getting all pissed and talking shit and then talking shit to you guys, like, I don't do that. Um, I don't go on a Twitter dragging other people's... How is it that I can do that, yet other people can't? It's because I'm disconnected from it. I'm not projecting something from within because in my opinion it doesn't fucking matter what matters is you getting better because in order to get better in trading you have to consistently self-improve the only fucking the only competition you have is yourself the same thing goes with business and i've heard this before from other business people is like if you look at the other competition you're constantly focused on them then you know that's not good, but if you if you're just focused on yourself and improving yourself, it just it seems to work, and that that's what it is. Is like your energy is finite. Why piss it away on a stranger on the internet or a stranger in real life or a stranger that cuts you off? Because here's the thing: chances are, if somebody is pissing you off, whether it's a stranger on the highway or on the fucking internet who you don't even know. Chances are, if you're getting that upset that easily, it's going to happen in your trading. Something could happen because think about it. 
if somebody cuts you off or it's a Twitter trader you don't like or somebody, a YouTube creator, and they're triggering you, okay? You're not in control of what other people do. You just aren't. You're in control of the way you feel and the way you think. That's it. However, most people just let it go on autopilot instead of just taking control. Um, and the conspiracy theorist in me believes that's what they want. Whoever they are, I don't fucking know. The Illuminati or the fucking alien overlords. I don't fucking know. But I really don't care. However, it's kind of genius if you think about it. If you're going to fucking rule the world, I'll let all these fucking people fight each other and not have, like, self-control. So... Chances are, if some stranger pisses you off, you're getting pissed off and you're trading real easy. Okay. And that's what I, I actually coach some guy who gets road rage real easy. And I go, you know what? Driving on the highway is like trading. If you can just not react, because you can't, you can't. If somebody's driving slow in front of you and won't move over, there is nothing you can do about it. Just like the markets. The markets will move in ways where... You can't do anything about it. All you can do is react and just manage. And then if it, the setup didn't work, you can't force a setup to work. You're going to have to wait for another opportunity. So it's same thing in driving on the highway. You can't control what these other fucking people are doing, just like the markets. So don't get all bent out of fucking shape. Learn to work on patience and traffic and just let it all fucking go and learn to be completely calm and relaxed and patient and shit like that will leak into your trading so like the it's like the mental aspect of trading is something most people don't work on Yet, it's it's one of the most important aspects of trading, and it has nothing to do with trading. It has everything to do with the way you're fucking living your life outside of the trading room. Because your trading, your mental game in trading is a mere reflection of who you are and the way you handle the world outside of the room. So, what little things gnaw at you outside of it and work on it? So... And I, I just see it constantly with traders, and it's just like, I don't even give a fuck, you know, whatever. The only thing I give it, and it's, like, it's funny, because I actually uh, dated some girl recently, and she got so fucking mad at me, because I don't watch politics. And, um, because I said, I don't give a fuck. I said, the only change I can make is by being the best version of myself and influencing the people in my inner circle. Like you guys or friends, right? Those are the only changes I can make. I can't fucking change the world. I can't go in there and do all this shit. I can't fucking fix the problem in Ukraine. I can't fix some border crisis. I can't fucking fix, you know, worldwide hunger or poverty or any of these big problems all i can do is be the best version of myself and when people come around me that is contagious and just influence my sphere and then it just goes out from there that's all i can fucking do and like the fact that i don't give a shit about politics she's it was funny because she's like you know very upset it's like i don't think this is gonna work out i think that's fucked up because you have no idea what's going on with me um because i you have no idea what's going on in in politics and it's and she goes i hope you find everything you're looking for and it's like i already have inner love inner peace inner happiness it's not like that every day for me i have my moments but i'm always striving for that so uh, in order to love somebody else, you need to love yourself. <laughs> in order to be patient in trading and not be m mad in trading, you shouldn't be mad with yourself. That's the thing. That's another thing. I, I've met a lot of traders who beat themselves up. They'll call themselves retards or they um, will call themselves stupid or I am such a failure. 
It's very important you do not talk like that. Using language patterns and shifting into um, talking positive about yourself, uh, it makes a huge difference. The way you think about yourself, the way you talk about yourself. If you talk about yourself like that, that's what you're ultimately going to become. Um, because here's the thing, top performers, top athletes, um, they're confident. And if you want to be a top performer in trading, because this is very much like athletics. Um, interestingly enough, an ex-professional baseball player found my channel and he said, hey, this is just like sports. And he realized how hard it was going to be. So I got a, pro I got a fucking ex-professional person vouching firsthand that trading is very much like sports. So there you go. But if you want to be at the top of the game, you got to be confident. You got to be positive. You got to, you got to think highly of yourself. And that's another thing. I think it's very important that you do become a positive person because if you're constantly pessimistic, this is just not going to fucking work for you. Um, most things you do in life aren't going to work out for you. I mean, if you're working on a car or something and you're constantly pessimistic about it and you don't think you can fucking fix the problem, well, then you're not. Um, so it's, it's very important you change that language pattern and don't beat your fucking self up. Um, because ultimately, um, you know, experience let's now let's, let's start to shift in experience. So that's kind of like, I've been going on a long time about the mental aspect. I could fucking talk about this forever. You can always check out the cult of cat. I don't, ha I mean, it's more woo woo magic shit with law of attraction, but I share my own firsthand experiences. Uh, guys that are on that channel, I promise I will do a video on it. I just like, I have to do this shit first. This is priority. That shit is just kind of, whenever I can do it. Um, so putting the, the, the mental aspect to the side is, you know, it's very important that you, you get that shit together. Uh, let's talk about f experience. Um, I really do believe that you guys have probably heard this quote that it takes 10,000 hours to be a master in something. I really do believe that, um, it, it it's true uh, I don't know how many hours I have in trading but it's several thousands because I don't sit here all fucking day I've I've come to terms that I don't want to sit here from open to close it's just uh, too much uh, for me and uh, when I was newer I felt like I was missing all these opportunities and sure if I could sit here all day long I would probably do better but then again I know from past that I've just I make I start to make more ex, more uh, mistakes because like fuck man I traded for like just an hour today and it was very mentally taxing because of the fighting and focus um, took 10 trades and like fuck I was up down up down and then like I finally hit this big trade and I had to manage it just right only in case it came back and then I had to get out and I happened to get out right as the market rotated off the lows of today um, not because I knew that's where the lows would be but there was a high probability that like that was a major target in two markets in the NQ and ES but when I have major targets they're there for a reason because those are potential areas that could pivot. I mean, if you want to check out that narration episode, my coffee link in the description, go watch the October 25th, 2023 narration episode. Um, if you're interested, pretty good episode. Um, talk a lot about micro. I talk a lot about micro stacking in that episode actually, but anyways, um, experience i mean fuck i i it's just like that's another thing i don't think you should sit here all fucking day i i think you should sit here for maybe two hours tops and if you have the time spend the rest of the time 
reviewing, uh, recording, reviewing your trades and visualizing what you could do better in the next session. Like if you fucked up, visualize yourself being calm and reliving that trade. Look at the chart. I have an episode, uh, I forget where it is, but this one goes over a lot of visualizations and somebody recently told me they love that. So thank you. And they wanted to know more about the mental aspect of trading because all the magic and Lance Breitstein even says this. He's like one of the, you know, it was Mike Bellafury. Now for me, the, 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 the guy that I really look up to is Lance. I love you, Mike. He found my channel. <laughs> he commented on the art of the trade video. I pinned it, but, um, even Lance says, you know, the magic happens outside of the session. And I think a lot of people just aren't doing that shit. And that's the thing. Um, we'll talk about experience, but let's talk about passion. So let's put experience on the back burner for a moment. Oh, you got to fucking love this. And you all think you love it, but you don't. And if you're a new trader, I'm going to tell you something. There's going to be a point in time where you're going to want to fucking quit. You may love it right now, but as far as I can tell, and this even happened with Lance, he almost gave up on trading, but he didn't. Then he became an eight figure fucking trader. And it's happened to me too there. And it happened to me multiple times and it's happened to a lot of friends of mine that are still doing this. But it's also happened to people who quit and never came back. You're going to hit a point where you generally don't want to fucking do this. You're looking at this. You're like, is this even fucking possible? Um, you're looking at yourself like I this is taking way too long. You're going to look at this from a, a perspective of like, you just you just want to give up. You want to give up. Think of a time where you actually wanted to give up and you did, and you never did that anymore. You're going to hit that point. The difference, the difference is, I don't know what the fuck it is about me, but I just will, will not fucking give up. I've come very close, but I just, for some reason, kept coming back. And I think that's also why the fa failure rate in trading is so high is because it's not people blowing out accounts necessarily. I think it's just people fucking give up. And there was apparently a study done with a broker that said, if you're doing this long enough, you'll eventually make it. How long is that? I have no fucking clue. I think it depends on the person. But they said the people that betted small and hung in for as long as possible, eventually made it. So this is why you can't just come in and just redline it. Don't be doing combine after combine. Some people are combine junkies that if I was to give you advice, do one once per month. Now you need to get consistent on SIM before you do a combine. Um, however, if you're going to start doing them once per month and that's it. And if you fuck up, you gotta, you gotta pay the price and you, you gotta have the fucking just sim trade until the next month. Because otherwise you keep doing these things and you keep resetting them. Uh, and then you're at this point, you're a gambling addict. And I, I, um, nobody talks about gambling addiction and trading but i'm it's a very real thing it's just like you're addicted to these combines you're addicted to trying to get funded you're essentially addicted to this big prize like you're in fucking vegas at the end of it which is a funded account that's the big prize and the make you know what i mean so um you gotta fucking let go once once per month at least but, but you better prove it to yourself before there's a womack you better pr prove it to yourself before you start doing the combines. Some people barely spend any time developing and then they're immediately on combines. I don't, I've never seen anybody get consistent in a year. I've not seen people do it in two years and 
I've been dealing with communities long enough that I'm not seeing it in three years either. Realistically, how long does it take? Probably four to seven years. Especially in the retail because we're at such a disadvantage. And when you have these professional prop traders who take about two fucking years in professional prop, it's going to take us longer. Okay. So I used to say it's not going to be the first year. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you that, that I really think it's four to fucking seven years. Uh, I've seen some guys take... 10 fucking years and then they finally turn the fucking corner after 10 fucking years like there's a buddy of mine that finally got consistent after 10 fucking years um but that goes to show you that if you don't give up you'll eventually but but you're really gonna spend 10 years of your fucking life grinding at this now they started picking up good habits and started doing reviews and report cards and they're like i've gotten more from reviews and report cards than i have for years and years of just trading so that goes back to me saying you know you got to do all the shit outside of it and the thing is if you don't love that stuff then do you really love trading and it what's interesting is like this is all about passion guys i've recently learned that nba the national basketball association in like the u.s um you know Apparently, most of the players that play the game don't fucking love the game. And there's a lot of videos out there of other players calling out these other players that don't love the game. They don't show up to practice on time or they barely practice. And what they love is all the shit that comes with basketball. They like the fame. They like the money. Um... You know, they like the attention, and I believe most traders are like that. They like the idea of being a trader. They like the idea of making money. They like the idea of using this money, and they fantasize about buying all this fucking shit. Useless shit. Like fucking Lamborghinis and stuff. Don't get me wrong, I like having things, but at, at, at some point in my life, I became... A minimalist to a degree that ew, I just don't like having too much shit and it's just like having money is nice to spend it on experiences with friends instead of just to have all this fucking shit um, so a lot of you know I, I think a lot of people fantasize about having shit junk you know whatever um, and just the pristine the, the the prestigious title of being a fucking traitor because it makes you feel like you got a big pee, pee or some shit so you know thing is in basketball mo most of these guys don't love it and that's the thing to get paid millions of fucking dollars they're not like us where you gotta have to fucking grind it out for years they get signed on for millions of fucking dollars and there are people, there are kids, and there's younger, you know, there's people that dream about being at that level that are actually love the game and that are passionate about the game that never get a fucking shot at it. And then you have these guys that are in there that don't love the fucking game, and they just squander that fucking opportunity. But they get the money up front, so therefore they're less likely to fucking grind. So that's the thing. Do you really love this? You probably don't because if you're not willing to review, visualize, change your life outside of trading, this is a lifestyle shift. Because humans are creatures of habits and we don't want to do uncomfortable things. And trading is all about being completely fucking uncomfortable. And you have to constantly be uncomfortable and keep pushing it. Because as you get more and more uncomfortable, what was uncomfortable now becomes comfortable, but you have to keep pushing through that. Let's talk about experience, okay? So, going back to the beginning of this video, when you're consuming content from someone like me, or somebody else on the internet, or a course provider, or whatever, here's the thing. 
You don't have the thousands of hours? I, I have no fucking idea how many hours I have. It's several thousands of hours. You know what's crazy is like... The game DayZ, some of you probably know what that game is. It's a brutally fucking hard game. And I used to watch like people play this like Frankie on PC if you guys know who that is and I loved watching people play DayZ and then when I played it I was absolutely shit at it and then there's like these guys that are like watch a 4,000 hour solo player play DayZ and then they just fucking crush that game uh, I used to play video games I used to play Battlefield Simi like I used to play it competitively not like where I got money and I was pretty good at it. It's because I had thousands of hours in it. I honestly think playing games that long is a waste because you could put that into trading, but that's just me. Uh, and make some real money uh, instead of like, I mean, sure, you could be a streamer or whatever, but if you're going to spend four, three, four thousand hours, like do it on this, <clears throat> like reviewing. So that's the thing is like when you consume material from other traders such as myself you know like you you go through my course that's free on youtube and then you buy my coffee just know that you don't have the thousands and thousands of hours of experience that i have that i have with my system that i intimately know inside and out because when i share all this knowledge with you and even through hours and hours of footage you know I got like over 50 something hours of narration up like narrations on the coffee and you could watch them all but that's the thing like there that's only a, a fraction of like the experience and everything I know about it up here like I, I just there's no way I could convey everything I know in an hour because I have thousands of hours of experience there's no fucking way so it goes to anything since this is a performance sport even poker like at one point I wanted to play poker then I realized how fucked up it is and how brutal it is just as brutal as it it's just as brutal to like do it professionally as trading and I'm like, nah, fuck this. Even then, you need thousands and thousands of hours of experience to really, really crush it or be competitive. And that's assuming you're doing the right practices because you can waste time and not be optimizing it. So, like, you know, a lot of new traders will consume a course or whatever and they think it's shit. Because it didn't work for them in a week or a month. But that's because the guy that presented it has thousands of hours of experience, which you do not have. And somebody recently told me they were going to do the tick drill, which in an older video I talked about, you know, do tick drills for a month. And they're sitting there fucking grinding them out. I've had a few guys who've done it and they it blew their mind that how, how much more they know about order flow. It's little shit like that. Just like the NBA players, it's not about playing the fucking game. It's all the other bullshit you got to do in order to play the game optimally. All these weird little things like tick drill, tick drill, tick drill, tick drill. I've done so many of those and then slip drills, slip drills, slip drills. That's another drill. Um, I've done so many little drills so many little things, so much visualization, so many little things that have nothing to do with actually playing the game that have everything to do with being better at the fucking game. Just like a ba baseball batter goes to the batting cage. He's not playing a game or they got to work out, even though like working out, does that really have anything to do with the actual game itself? No, but that's part of it. So you can be better at the game. Working on your cardio so you can run to the bases quicker. So, um, you just, it's just going to take, you, you need 10,000 hours to be a master at something. And that's the thing is like, as you go through this, 
depending on how you approach it, like you can expedite the learning process by doing the things that I s always say you should do. But here's the deal. Um, if you don't do it, it's just going to take longer. So you can optimize your time and get there sooner by doing, you know, report cards, reviewing, tagging, visualizing. And then at that point, it really does become a full-time gig where you're working harder than you would at a normal fucking job where you could be here sun up to sundown and you don't have a life. And I've done a lot of that and I still do that shit. There's a lot of like, don't get me wrong, I go have fun or what have you, but there's a lot of like sitting here and th this is it. And then I make these prep videos and then that, you know, I prep and that can be an hour or 40 minutes, it depends. And then I review a lot. I mean, I've been kind of slacking on it. Shouldn't, I've been only reviewing bad days. I need to review the good days. So even I fuck up. But I think it's taken me longer than a lot of fucking people because I wasn't consistently doing the work that I needed to do. So, experience is huge, guys. Um, you're going to feel like you're not making any fucking progress. And really, it is very incremental that even in a year or two years, you're not there yet. Look back and look at how far you've come look at how much more knowledge you have and you have to really look at trading from that perspective because it really is a journey whether you want it to be or not are you growing and are you going forward because if you are that's all that matters so yeah you you really um because looking seven years back or hell, all the way to 2019, holy fuck, I've come a long way. Like, it's, it's crazy, and there's, like, these moments where I have these pivotal moments, and just, like, my system gets more and more and more refined as I grow and gain more and more experience. Hell, in another fucking seven years, I'm gonna be a drastically different trader than now. And then I'll be looking back on this video like, God damn, fat cat from seven years ago. You have no idea what you was talking about. So just keep that in mind when you're consuming content. It's just experience. You're going to need a fuckload of it. There's really no replacement for that shit. So let's kind of go on the lines of failure. I know this is a long one. Um, failure is experience. Failure is what you get when you didn't get what you want. You're either going to make money or you're going to fucking learn a lesson. And let me tell you, a lot of trading good has a lot to do with not with with knowing what not to do. All right. Like trading good, like you're going to fuck up and you're going to make every mistake in the book and you're going to just keep fucking up and doing a bunch of stupid shit. But that's how you learn to actually fucking figure out what actually works. So, yeah, a lot of trading is just like, just, it's just, I think trading is mostly knowing what not to do. And if most of trading is not doing certain things, because in the end, during a trading session, a fraction of the time you're sitting in front of it because most of the time you're sitting in front of the computer you're not trading and there's a fraction these little brief moments in time where you actually take a trade so most of the time is sitting here doing nothing while now don't get me wrong counting ev for me is important and just building context and watching it that is doing something that's that that is doing something but as far as like actually taking the trade most of the time is doing nothing and there's very brief moments in time where you finally put the trade on and those optimal areas are only seconds so really you're sitting here for hours and there's only a few seconds per day where there's actually a good entry 
And most of the time where I'm just sitting here doing nothing, I'm spending most of the time not doing nothing because in the past I sat here and traded that shit and it didn't work. So you have to fuck up. You have to fail. So embrace it. You, you really should embrace it. And this goes back to not beating yourself up. You need to embrace the failures and understand this is important. And you need to take that and learn from it. There was a guy that lost $10,000 in a day in the trading room. Did he really lose 10000 I don't fucking know. But I don't even give a shit. Here's the thing. The point is he claims he lost ten grand, And he's like, I'm done for the day. I'm like, no, you need to sit there and fucking review it. Because if you just fucking walk off, then you have no fucking idea. If you pay $10,000, you better get your fucking money's worth. If you pay $10,000 and fail today, you better fucking go through that shit with a fine tooth comb and figure out exactly what happened. Don't speculate and think you know what happened. Because I'm telling you from somebody who's reviewed thousands of hours of sessions um you think you know what happened but once you review it you're like holy shit it's kind of like witnesses in court typically it's all bullshit because like people's memories start to shift and stuff so witnesses aren't really reliable and you're not re you're you're your memory isn't as reliable as, as you think. And then chances are something happened you didn't even fucking see. And then when you review it, you're like, oh, fuck, I, I just didn't see that. So you can't remember something you didn't see at the time. And then when you go back and you see it, then it's like, all right. So I need to pay attention to that little thing a little more, right? So that's the thing. Like, if you're going to fucking fuck up, my biggest fuck up days, I spend... Or my fuck up days, I spend usually spent way more time reviewing those than good days. And I and that's where my trading pivoted. Like I remember this one fuck up day. I, I forgot how much I lost. I think it was about two two thousand or something. <clears throat> Either way, it was it was a drawdown day at the time, and it was trading less size. I spent six fucking hours reviewing, and then I learned psych numbers, and I learned how the price likes to chop around psych numbers every five points. And then it just totally just changed me to, like, now I pay attention to that shit, and um, it's allowed me to build upon my system, and because of that... F because of that fuck up day, it's it's made me more than what I lost at that time. So like you, when you fuck up, you need you need to learn from it. Um, so I think that's um, very important. So anyways, that's experience is important. Another thing I would suggest is watch poker blogs learn how to play poker you don't need to necessarily play it however when i learned about poker and watch these poker vlogs and watch how these guys like deal with tilt or deal with fuck ups or deal with certain hands um i learned so much from it because it's so relatable to trading and i guess like I always heard that good poker players make great traders and now I understand why. Watch these vloggers and shit. Um, it's interesting because like they'll have certain vloggers will have these weird hands that they w weren't sure what to do in that specific circumstance they could be extremely like skilled but that's the same thing with pokers like every hand you have and the flop turn and river and the hands your hat your opponents all have are going to be vastly different so you could probably get king kings or ace aces however the way the flop turn river comes and the way your opponents are betting and where you position on the table 
every time you play those aces or kings, it's always going to be slightly different. And this goes back to how I said every setup is nuanced and slightly different. So sometimes these poker players that are very experienced will have very odd hands that they sit there and they study. And really, I think that's very relatable to the review process because like there'll be times I'll have these setups, but they'll be like getting set up in such a fucking weird fucked up way that I'll get confused. And this happened to me recently where it's just like the setups were like, ah, this is a weird hand. Like my setup is like a weird hand, like I, a bit of dissonance, like, ah, fuck. I'm not sure. It's like, it's the setup. I should play it, but I'm not sure. And then it's doing something weird in weird ways that I'm not sure. That's how you get good at trading. Once you have a system or setup, you need to, and this is why review is so important, is like, you're gonna have these weird spots or these weird plays that you've not experienced before. Um, and sometimes it might work out, sometimes it may not. Because, um, what was it? Oh, when I drew down on Monday, um, like I knew the setup, but then the ES did something weird. And I was kind of getting in too early, so that's where I fucked up. But then the ES did something drastically weird where Russell and NQ didn't. And I'm like, fuck, man, even if I wanted to play my hand like, I want to play that hand, I would have played that hand, but I would have took a fat fucking loss on it. Had I played it appropriately, I would have still took a loss on it. The thing is, I, like, got in way too early. And there's a DRC episode 2 on coffee, actually talks about this hand. That, um, so if you want to see it. Um, so, like, it was just really weird. Uh, we're, well, like, ES did some weird shit, and then, um... Then it finally set up and I was already out of bullets and I just sat the, there and watched the market and I go, this is the play. Like, had I still had risk capital, this is where I would have needed to get in. And the motherfucker ran a hundred ticks. Would have barely took any risk. Um, but the, the hand got so goofy and I started to FOMO a little bit, get in a little too early and I fucked myself. Uh, and then the ES did some weird shit that I've not seen before. So when you deal with these, that's the thing. When you deal, that, that's where I'm saying. No, you, there's, you're not going to find a setup that's just like you can copy and paste. That's why I think programming something to trade for you is a lot harder than you think. Um, when you get these weird setups, you need to really study it and visualize it so that way if that weird little thing happens again which it probably will you'll know exactly what to do instead of just fucking off for the day and i think once you start to understand what trading really is watch some poker learn how to play it i've never played a hand in my life but i've consumed so much on it that it's like I've learned so much from watching other people play that really has applied to my trading. So guys, uh, that is advice for newer traders. Um, it's, if I was to tell anybody, don't do this job. I've heard poker players say the same thing don't do it um but if you're gonna do it just understand that this is going to take an extremely long time however just believe in yourself push forward embrace the fails uh become a positive person disconnect from the drama be at peace with yourself and everyone around you because this is a uh, this is a this is more than a job this is something that you're gonna have to change your life in order to do 
So with that being said, check out this playlist and I will see you guys in the next video. Whoa, Mac, what you doing, boy? Hey.